the Ailman locomotive can be said to be an ancestor of all modern diesel electric locomotives, but in its case, it was an external rather than internal combustion locomotive. In 1893, the French engineer Jean Jacques Ailman started work on a steam electric locomotive, which he intended to be capable of running at a high speed and would do away with the hammer blow and oscillation associated with the traditional steam locomotive. He also hoped to reduce the rolling friction associated with the traditional locomotive with all its moving parts, and by mounting the locomotive on a pair of powered bogies. It meant the entire weight of the locomotive was available for adhesion. Electric locomotives were not new in 1893. The very first, the Galvani, had been built and experimented with in the 1840s in Scotland. But hitherto, they had either relied on heavy batteries or expensive overhead equipment or third rail, which made electrification prohibitively expensive. Eilman's idea, therefore, was for an electric locomotive which could generate its own power. Eilman's locomotive, which he termed Le Fusée Électrique after Stevenson's rocket Le Fusée, and which he saw as the progenitor of a new species of railway locomotives, was a wholly unique design. Eilman's locomotive was carried on two four-axle bogies, with each axle being powered, through an axle-mounted 80 to 100 horsepower traction motor. The electrical equipment was supplied by Brown Bovary and Company of Switzerland. Direct electric current was generated using a six-pole, 500 kilowatt generating set, driven by a horizontal twin-cylinder compound steam engine. The engine was also built in Switzerland by the Swiss Locomotive and Machine Works at Winterhur. The high-pressure cylinder measured 425 by 300 millimetres, and the low-pressure cylinder 650 millimetres by 300 millimetres, or in old money, 16.7 and 25.6 inches by 11 and a quarter. Steam was provided by a fairly conventional marine-type boiler. The firebox was a cylindrical drum with corrugated sides to prevent any collapse, and this meant it didn't require any stays. The boiler was built at Le Havre and had a working pressure of 12.6 atmospheres or 185 psi. Electric current for the ancillaries and train lighting was provided by a second much smaller steam engine and generating set, rated at only 10 kilowatts. Speed control was through a 12-step rheostat, and the traction motors were connected in parallel, but for low-speed movements could also be operated in series. Braking was via air brakes with an electrically operated compressor operating disc brakes on each axle. The locomotive was 16.5 metres or just over 54 feet in length and in working order with 6 metric tonnes of coal and 12,000 litres of water on board weighed 118 metric tonnes. It was capable of a maximum line speed of over 100 kilometres per hour. La Fusée Électrique underwent testing in February 1894 on the railway between Paris and Le Havre, which had been specially chosen because of its difficult terrain and gradients, which at their steepest were up to 8% or 1 in 125. With two passenger carriages, a dynamometer car and two freight vans filled with batteries, Le Fusée Électrique proved itself more than capable of working a train over such a hilly route hitting a maximum line speed of 43 miles per hour. In May 1894, she was put to work from Paris to Mantes-la-Jolie with a train of eight carriages covering 53 miles in 55 minutes, or at a speed of 107 kilometers per hour or 66 miles per hour. Under trial, the fusée électrique was shown to use 15% less coal than a conventional locomotive, was much gentler on the track and had a much faster rate of acceleration and a higher torque than a conventional steam locomotive. Furthermore, thanks to its bogies, it rode beautifully, as good as any Pullman coach. 
The only major downside was that the locomotive was rather complicated and the lack of communication between the fireman and the driver who were separated in the main cabin by the two generator sets. So successful was the design that the Chamon de Fer d'Ouest, or the French Western Railway, commissioned two much larger machines which came into service in 1897, the same year that the fusil électrique was broken up, its two power bogies being used to create two eight-wheeled electric locomotives, which were used on the Underground Railway between Saint-Germain-en-Laye and Paris. Le fusil électrique was probably ahead of its time, even for the French railways, which were then actively experimenting with electrification. But this was also the time when Gaston du Bosquet and Alfred de Glen were enjoying enormous success with their high-speed four-cylinder compound locomotives. And indeed, this year, 2022, sees the centenary of the first rollout of French electrification in 1922. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please leave a comment below. Please also like, share and subscribe, and click the notification bell. I'd also like to thank my generous supporters on Patreon for helping to make this video possible. And see you all next time on Rail Story.